Hi, everybody. Happy Thursday. Welcome to this week's Photographer Spotlight webinar. Our guest today is Lindsay Turner of Lindsay Victoria Photography. Thanks for joining us today, Lindsay. Thanks for having me, Karen. Awesome. Well, we're very, very excited to hear um, everything you have to say. So I'm going to turn my mic and my camera off so that I'm not distracting. And I'm going to hand it over to Lindsay. And thank you again so much for coming, Lindsay. We really appreciate you being here. Thanks for inviting me. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and share my screen. All right. So everybody, good afternoon. My name is Lindsay Turner. I, I am a newborn family schools and branding photographer based in Litchfield County, Connecticut. I've been featured recently on NBC New York. I'm a contributing writer for Rangefinder, and I'm a leader for the Elena S. Blair Education Community. Um, and thank you to Elena for that beautiful photo of myself. So before we get started, three fun facts about me. Um, I was an intern at the Metropolitan Opera my last semester in college. I released a jazz album in my early 20s that topped the charts on jazz radio stations. And I was a PR and marketing director for arts nonprofits for 15 years before I started my photography business. So I've always been involved in the arts one way or another, and I'm excited for this portion of my, my career. So this presentation is called From Poses to Profits, Fine Art School Photography. So what is fine art school photography anyway? Um, some of you might not know. So we all remember our own school photos from our childhood, super cheesy backgrounds, stiffly posed, forced smiles. They're usually things we laugh about <laughs> and look back on, but not anything we treasure. Um, so for me, the background is simple. I use a dark gray paper drop backdrop and I deliver exclusively black and white photos, which is kind of a departure from the school's market. And instead of forcing an expression, I encourage children to be themselves. So these are examples of beautiful portraits that aren't, aren't smiles, and that's okay. So if you love photographing children and want to work more during the week, um, this chat is for you. I absolutely fell in love with school photography. I started just a year ago, and I'm excited to share with you what I learned and that's what we'll be going through today. So first up, we'll be getting ready, doing your homework and practicing, then poses and prompts for natural expressions, how to book schools, educating schools and parents, photo day workflow, and selling and delivering the images you've taken. So the first one is getting ready and doing your homework and practicing, which is really important. Obviously, you signed up for this webinar, so that's a great first step. Um, I took an online course called Schooled with Elena S. Blair, and I attended a virtual volume conference um, this winter called School and Sports Photographers Association of California, um, and both of those things were really helpful as a foundation. I spent time researching online proofing and ordering systems. I use ShootProof. Uh, labs, packaging, lighting, backdrops, everything that I would need. Uh, I ordered the equipment. I invested about $2,000 um, in a strobe, an octobox, a trigger, a C-stand, seamless paper backdrops, and, and uh, light stands. Can you photograph fine art school portraits with natural light? Absolutely. Um, I made the choice to invest in artificial light so that I could work flexibly and consistently, and it was important to me, but you can certainly do this with a camera and a window. So the first thing I did was practice. Um, I set up my backdrop in my garage. I photographed my son. I invited a friend who had two daughters uh, to practice photographing them. But it wasn't just about practicing taking the pictures. For me, this was a walkthrough of the whole process. So everything I would need to do from start to finish, photographing them, culling and editing the photos, setting up an online gallery, having them place an order, delivering the prints uh, or the digitals that they ordered. In this case, I gifted them to the parents who came. Um, but I wanted to go through the whole process so I would know what the families in my schools would be experiencing and troubleshoot beforehand. So from there, I was ready to photograph some schools. <laughs> um, the question I get asked a lot is, how do you get natural expressions? And honestly, this is one of the things I was most concerned about, switching to a volume setting, photographing kids in three to five minutes. So I focus on silly humor uh, for natural expressions. And, and the humor changes based on the age group, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, if a joke isn't landing, I move right to the next prompt because, again, you only have, you know, three to five minutes a child. And remember, a natural expression isn't always a smile. Those examples I shared at the beginning, um, some kids are simply more reserved and parents are going to want to see their kid. So don't focus uh, to force a smile if it's not happening. So here's a couple examples. Thank you to Mary Vance for taking this behind the scenes video for me. People always ask me how I get such natural expressions and laughs and smiles from my kiddos. Um, and I sit here and just, I'm silly. <laughs> I ask silly questions. They think I'm ridiculous. 
and they end up laughing and having a great time. My goal is always a natural expression. That's not always a smile. Some kids are more serious, and that's okay. I just want you to see who your child is. Okay, good. And horses say moo, right? Yeah. Now what do they say? Nay. They do, are you sure? Did you? That's an, that's an important question. Did you invite this horse to school today? Did you ask me to come? No. What's he doing here? How did he get in the building? Are horses allowed at school? I have a picture of Ames. I'm not saying Oh my goodness. I know shy him. So here are a couple of actual prompts. I thought it would be helpful for you to see me actually working with the kids. Um, mostly it's just silly, but um, a lot of people ask, well, what do you say? How do you make them laugh? So here are a couple of examples. The first one, as you saw in that video, I had a little um, stuffed horse on my head. Um, so I have two little toys and I put them on my head and I say, um, I want you to meet my friend. Uh, if I put the horse up, I'll say, you know, my friend Giraffe. And the child will say, no, that's not a giraffe, it's a pig, or whatever it is. And no, no, he's a giraffe. He's yellow, he has long neck, and long neck and spots, right, right? And the kids will insist, no, it's not that, it's a pig or it's a horse or whatever it is. And I just continue to insist um, if they're into it, and it just makes them laugh. It's so fun. That's great for younger kids. Um, as they get a little bit older, elementary age, this is a really fun one. Um, you'll find that if you just ask the child a question, they're gonna be really honest with you. So if you say, hey, what did you have for breakfast? They'll say, well, I had eggs and cereal, and that's not funny, it's not gonna make them smile. So I start with, you know what I had for breakfast? What? Ice cream. And they look at me like I'm crazy. You know what I put on top of the ice cream? What? Hot dogs. I love hot dogs on my ice cream, don't you? And they'll look at me like I'm completely insane, but they'll, then they'll laugh. And then I'll say, wait, let me guess what you had for breakfast. Cauliflower pizza, or, again, just the most ridiculous thing you can think of, and it will make them giggle. Um, another one of my favorites, again, this is for um, a little bit older kids as well. I find around second or third grade and up. Um, so I'll say, tell me the name of a good friend in your class. So let's say the kid says Sarah. So I say, okay, repeat after me. My friend Sarah, my friend Sarah, likes to go to Mars. Now they start to look at me funny. Likes to go to Mars and eat pickles and cheese and eat pickles and cheese. Now they're either laughing or I get the like, really lady face. And if it's not landing, I move on. If it's funny, I keep going. Um, and do backflips and comb my hair with porcupine quills and just whatever ridiculous thing I can think of. Um, and if they're giggling, they're giggling and I just go with it. So a couple of exam examples of poses specifically. So I have my kids sit and stand. Usually the younger kids, I just keep them sitting. Um, when they get to be sort of second, third grade, I'll also have them stand. So these are all examples of seated facing forward poses. You can see they're all a little bit different, but they're all facing me head on. These are seated off to the side. This kid absolutely cracked up. He was roaring for me like his favorite animal, which I loved. These are standing straight on. Again, you can see each one is a little bit different. Um, I asked them to cross their arms or not, hands in pockets, depending on if they were fidgety. Um, and this kid on the far right just was hysterically laughing at whatever I said. I don't even remember what it was now. And these are standing off to the side a little bit. So it's, it's formulaic, it has to be at this pace, um, but it works and they're all a little different because each kid is different. So this is a really important one. How do you book a school? I, I would say start with your own school if you're a parent, um, start with your child's school. If they use a big box company, uh, request a meeting with the head of school or the principal, share what you offer, how it's different uh, and better than the product and service they're currently receiving, uh, bring samples so they can see. Show them the ordering process, how easy it is for the parents and the administrators, and sell the benefits to the school, because it's the person at the front desk, usually, who's doing all the work, working with the school photographer. If they already have a photographer, um, and it's a school that's really important to you and you really want to do it, you can come up with options to um, make yourself valuable. Offer to donate a session to the school auction, take headshots for the staff and teachers, and any, way, any other way you can be of service to them. And then ask friends to pitch you to their schools, but don't just say, hey, would you recommend me to your school? Um, arm them with the material. I write an email that can be forwarded directly to the school administrator, and then I get the contact information to follow up and request an in-person meeting. And I wouldn't even say, you know, don't, don't email your friend and say, you know, hey, Sarah, it was so great to see you last weekend, blah, blah, blah. Write it exactly as you want the administrator to see it, assuming that the friend is just gonna forward it directly as is. And then research your ideal school. You know, if you've, if you've exhausted your child's school and your friend's schools, start Googling and find schools that you really want to get. Um, those could be small preschools if you're getting started. They could be large public schools. It really depends on what you want to do. But call the main office. Be brave. Um, you know, emails can get lost. 
Introduce yourself, ask if they have a school photographer. If the answer is yes, don't just say, okay, thanks, bye. Ask if they're happy with the service and the products they're receiving. Ask who makes the decision and when they make the decisions, get their name and contact information and when would be a good time to follow up. And then follow up in an email and don't give up. One email um, is not enough. Um, and if you don't hear back, don't assume it's a no. You know, space it out a couple weeks later, try the whole process. So um, this is a checklist I put together that I find really helpful before you walk in the door at the school. First and foremost, create a contract and make sure they initial and sign it. You want to know that they read every section and that you're on the same page. Request a point person um, and schedule a walkthrough to choose a room where you're going to do the photos, ideally with a window. Um, request a roster spreadsheet. This is really important. Um, with the student's name, teacher name, or class, and if they're willing to share it, a super bonus is the parent's name, email, and phone. Schools are hesitant to share that information, but I always ask because it makes the selling process easier. And then schedule your days uh, at the school by classroom so everyone knows ahead of time and can plan their class accordingly. So the teachers can plan, they don't feel put out, and the parents know what day their kid's hair needs to be brushed. <laughs> The next piece is communicating directly with the parents. So I request that my schools include uh, copy text and images in at least three of their email newsletters heading up to school picture day. And again, I write them so they just have to copy and paste. Whatever you can do to make it easier for your schools or your friends you're asking for help, do it. <laughs> and then also there are no mistakes because you say exactly what you want them to say. So the first email I ask them to send is an introduction email introducing me as their school photographer and announcing the picture day is coming up and the dates. The second one is a reminder. Again, the picture day is coming up, and this time a link to a dedicated welcome page on my website specifically to that school. Um, and then the last one is an announcement that photos um, will be ready with a link. If they want to do more, fantastic. If they want to help me follow up more than once, even better. But these three, at a minimum, are really important. So I mentioned that website link. So I create an unlinked page on my website for each school. I welcome the parents. I set expectations. And this is the same link I'm going to drive them back to once the images are ready to view. The page includes a headshot and an introdu introduction. Again, with big box companies, you don't know who's interacting with your child. I want them to see my face. I also want them to know I'm a family photographer and a branding photographer in case they need those other services. I include a few school portraits and a description of what fine art school portraits are so that they can get a sense of what to expect. The schedule, which day each class will be photographed, again, so they know when to brush their kids' hair and get them dressed. And then a, I have a required form. I say required because I want them to do it, maybe 80% do. Um, but I ask them three things if they want their child's gallery password protected, their preferences on a model release. I give them the choice to say yes, no, or an in-between. And some families will say, sure, you can share in your portfolio, but not on social media. So I give them that option. And then the last is an opt-in for my email newsletter. This I didn't do at the beginning. I wish I had, um, but it's on there now for every school I do moving forward. On photo day itself, um, before I get there, I use that roster to identify the children. That's why you needed it. Um, so I make spreadsheets, uh, excuse me, I take a, I mail merge a spreadsheet and then I take, um, I print Avery labels and then I put them on a little index card and then I organize those alphabetically by classroom as I'm gonna be photographing them so that I have them all in order on the day of and I can just have my assistant pull them one by one to help me identify the kids, which is really important. On the day of, uh, I greet the point person at the school. First of all, I let them know what time I'll be ready to start, uh, what time the first class should come down. And I set up my equipment and we're off and away. I request three to four children come down at a time with a teacher or parent volunteer. They remain in the hallway and my assistant calls them in one at a time so they don't distract each other. Also, this was necessary because of COVID this year, um, but it worked and I think I'll continue doing it this way moving forward. Then my assistant holds up that handy card I had them I had made. I photograph the card first and then the child. I spend about three to five minutes with each kid. And then I work through my poses and prompts just like I showed you before. So after all the pictures have been taken, it's time to sell them and deliver them to your families. So how do you do that? Um, back to the education and the research piece. A software, um, there are so many programs out there for proofing and selling your school portraits. Shoe Proof, Pixie Set, Got Photo, Photo Day, Image Quicks. Like any other software, you need to explore several to see which is the best fit for your needs. I use ShoeProof. I love their desktop uploader and their ability to have a password protected album for each child. 
And you can pick a lab and have them ship directly to each family. There are shipping costs involved. I have the parents pay for that if I choose that option. Or you can self-fulfill and deliver your photos yourself to the school so that the administrators can hand them out to the parents. So I know you're going to ask, what do you charge? This is a big one. The answer is different for everyone. Your cost of doing business, your market, is it a public or private school, what, what you're offering. The thing most people don't know about photographing school portraits is the fee structure itself. While the school is technically engaging you to come and take those pictures, and yes, you need to be a legal business, have a contract and liability insurance, they don't pay you. Schools are typically done on spec, meaning that you photograph every single child in the school, and then the parents have the option to purchase those photos, but there is no obligation to do so. Here's what I offer um, as a starting point, just to give you some idea. Um, I have a la carte and package options, both print and digital. Discounted print packages for one pose starts at 55 for two five by sevens. A la carte prints start at $30 for one five by seven. Framed prints start at 95. A single digital starts at 50. And the full gallery of digital files is $90. And that's really just an offer they can't refuse. Now, the numbers you really need to know before you get stuck in the what I charge. Volume photography is a numbers game. There are really only three numbers that you need to think about. Your buy rate, your average sale, and your school average. So let me walk you through that. This is just an example. These aren't real numbers, um, but just to give you a sense of how to get to that number. So let's say your revenue uh, for a school was $10,000. These are just round numbers to make it easy. Total kids that you photographed in the school were 200, and the number of children whose pictures were purchased is 170. So that means your buy rate, you take the number of kids who ordered divided by the number of kids who you photographed. And so for 170 divided by 200, your buy rate is 85%. That for the record is actually my buy rate, which is ridiculous. In volume photography, it's usually more around 65%, but it depends on the school, the community, um, what you're offering, all those other pieces. But that is a, a huge buy rate. So don't expect if you're photographing 200 kids that 200 families are gonna buy those images. And then with that $10,000 number, your average sale for those who did buy, in this case, is $58.83. But then you also have to consider the school average. So the number of kids photographed, because that's your time too, divided by the amount of money, um, sorry, the amount of money that you made, $10,000 in this case, divided by $200 is $50. So that's helpful because if you start looking at schools and you don't know, have any idea what you're going to generate for income, um, if you start with a smaller school, you might be able to, you know, get some sense of these numbers. And then if you look at a school with 50 kids, 100 kids, 300 kids, 500 kids, you can sort of estimate approximately, approximately what you might bring in to see if it's worth your time pushing forward with that school. So a little bonus, I didn't talk about this before, but pop-ups. Um, this is something I did this year. If you're having trouble getting your first school or you're intimidated at the thought of taking on a school if it just feels too overwhelming, I highly recommend hosting a pop-up in your community for a couple of reasons. First, find a partner location. I rented a space at my local community center, yoga studio, and a children's art studio. This is different than just hosting it in your garage and inviting people to your home because now you have the opportunity to build relationships with these venues and people in your community. So marketing this also became easier because I asked each venue to help me cross promote. I, they included me, uh, the pop-up event in their email newsletter, and on their social media. And again, I made it easy for them. I wrote the copy, I gave them the photos, I provided a flyer, I made in Canva so they could share it. Anything that you can do to make it easier for them to help you when you ask, do it. Um, and this ended up being really fantastic, um, both in my local community in Litchfield County, Connecticut, and in my old community in Brooklyn where I did a pop-up last month. And this is something that happened there that I'll tell you about in a second, but just go ahead and watch. A local photographer helping bring back some normalcy to the school year for kids in Brooklyn. Lindsay Turner heard that PS8 was not planning to host a picture day this year, so she stepped in and held a pop-up picture day at Creatively Wild Art Studio in Dumbo. Families from all over the city brought their kids to get some unique shots to remember a year unlike any other. It's so not your cheesy backdrop from when you were kids, no, no blue backdrops with fake cheesy smiles, but natural expressions and beautiful black and white portraits for the families to remember this year in a more positive way, a little silver lining for them. Yeah, that's definitely not what my school photos look like. Those kids look really at ease in front of the camera. That is the mark of a good photographer. Lindsay says she keeps her sessions with kids quick so they don't get bored. That is the key. So that was NBC New York. Um, to be fair, my background is in PR. However, um, you can't ever guarantee something like that happens, but when you create an event like a pop-up, 
it's newsworthy. Um, so I sold it as saving school photos in Brooklyn. I pitched six or seven local New York news stations. I spent time in clubhouse rooms and built relationships and followed up and followed up and followed up. And at eight o'clock that morning, I sent one last email. So you just never know. Um, creating these opportunities can be um, not just an opportunity to make some money or meet some families who might hire you for family pictures, but also give you credibility and social proof in the press, which is great. So is fine art school photography for you? Do you love photographing children? Do you want to work more on the weekdays and spend more time with your family on the weekends? Do you want to be in front of more potential family clients? Do you want to get more involved in your local community? Are you a detail-oriented planner? If you said yes to all those questions, then school photography might be a great fit for you, and I encourage you to consider it. So the very last thing is that I didn't talk about is gear, um, honestly, because it's boring. But it's important in some cases if you decide you want to do artificial light and not use just a window. Um, I put together a freebie uh, of my gear list. Um, before I took on school photos, I had never used artificial light. I'm talking 12 months ago. I made a list of all the gear that I use for schools um, because it felt really overwhelming to me, and I hope it's a good place to start. I am a Nikon user. Uh, I shoot with a Nikon D750, so all of the things in the list are for that specific um, Nikon camera. So be sure to go through, and if you use a different system, you'll need to to get something else that works for you, but this is just sort of an overview. Um, it's pretty minimal. I only spent $2,000, um, which I understand is an investment, but it's one that's paid off in spades. Um, and I've also used it in my branding work now um, and in other places that I wouldn't have considered beforehand. So if you sign up for my email newsletter list, I'll send that over to you. And that's it. And here's how you can reach me. My website is lindsayvictoriaphotography.com. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, also at Lindsay Victoria Photography. I'm on uh, Instagram more, probably. So DM me if you have questions. I'd love to see examples as you're starting out, if you give it a try. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions I might not be able to get to in the Q&A. But here we go. I'm going to stop sharing, I think. <laughs> there we go. All right. Hi, Karen. Awesome. Thank you so much. That you're was welcome. awesome. There are some questions already. The yeah. first question is, do you also provide a class photo? So that's a very good question. Um, yes and no is the answer to that. So because of COVID this year, I couldn't have the children seated side by side safely in anywhere. So what I offered to the schools was like a collage, more like um, a yearbook style image, which actually the schools really loved um, because it was the best shot of every child. So you didn't have a photo where a teacher wasn't happy with how they looked or they blinked. Um, I took portraits of all of the teachers while I was there for that purpose and then made collage images and they were really grateful for them. Awesome. Um, Mary also had a question. Where do you purchase the envelopes for delivering the photos when you're delivering to the school? So if, you're not, if you're not mailing directly to the parents. So I self-fulfill with ShootProof. Um, I use color ink um, and order. The one thing I didn't mention is um, I use deep matte fine art paper. Um, and the, as you saw, all of my images are black and white. So it's a different product, which is another reason I charge more. But um, I deliver them in um, a little folio. And the company I use got bought by somebody else. So I will look it up. <laughs> and, and at the end, I'll try to put a, put a link in. Um, but uh, they got bought out, and I can't remember who bought them. <laughs> That's OK. <laughs> um, Joe also has a question. Do And this is a really great one. This is shoot proof specific. So. Um, but I'd love to hear how you do it. Her question is, do you do an individual gallery per child? Um, and for 200 children, is there a quick way to do this and shoot proof? How, and one more question, how many photos do you include per child? Those are all really great questions. So yeah. this is actually, um, I had previously used Pixie Set for my private family and branding clients. And this is one of the primary reasons I switched to shoot proof. So shoot proof has what they call their desktop uploader. So when I, um, I photograph the children, I pull everything into Photo Mechanic, and I select uh, the name card that I photographed first that I told you about, and then all the pictures of the kids. So I make sure that I tag that when I'm pulling them in in Photo Mechanic. And then I have the set up or I pick out their name. I actually do an advanced school of school picture day so that I can, um, I put all the photos in each one of those folders and then I put those folders inside each classroom and then that all those classroom photos inside the school image. So that's three folders deep 
and I take that major primary folder with the school's name and I drop and drag it into ShootProof and it figures it all out for you. It is the best ever. So once it's all loaded up, it's, it's loaded just as I just described it to you. Each child's photo is in each one of their folders. Then I can go in if the parents have requested a password and password protect those galleries so that they'd have to use that password in order to access it. So when the, the parents see the gallery, they go to the home page and then they drill down. They see their classroom teacher name and they open it up and then they go to their child's folder and then there are just their child's photos in that, um, in that folder. So I don't know if I technically got that all right, Karen, with the naming yeah. structure of how everything's <laughs> done. It is, it is pretty fantastic, I have to say. Yeah, the desktop uploader does help with that organization. Um, and I think that's how, at least from my experience, how most um, school photographers do it. Instead of giving each person a gallery, they'll put um, albums and sub albums to yeah. organize it well. So yeah. you're just, in other words, sharing that one main link to the gallery and everybody can reach their own photos from that same link. Exactly. And if the school wants everybody password protected, you can do that too. Um, but it's just, it's fantastic. <laughs> there was, was there a third part to that question that I, yeah, asked? it was, um, how many photos do you include per child? This is really hard for me. So <laughs> if it were me, you know, as a parent, um, there's, there's a balance between, um, indecision overload, <laughs> um, and not enough. So if a kid is super expressive, um, I might include up to, you know, seven or nine. Um, if I struggle and I just didn't get a lot of variety, then, you know, it would be a minimum of three to four. There is also a way, um, I think it's Joe that asked that question. There is a way where if you're sending, whereas each parent only can see their child's um, album, in other words, they're password protected, so they can only see that one um, album, you can have it so that all the other albums are invisible, so that the parent can just see that one album. Yeah. If you want to do that, you can, it's a setting that, um, the support folks over here would turn on for you. So if that is something you want to look into, just reach out to them and they can add that feature to your account. And then another pro tip, if you're not um, organized enough or uh, so I, I couldn't just say, okay, it's only going to be four photos per kid for every kid. If there were great pictures in another gallery, I wanted to give them to the parents. So um, what I did is there's an option um, that the support person I called as you proof told me about that you can toggle on and off to show um, to turn off how many images are in the folder so the parents won't see, well, how come this kid got three <laughs> and that kid got nine? And I mean, they could click through if they're not password protected and see, but I didn't have any complaints and no one brought it up. But not having yeah. that there for them to see was important. That's right. So I recommend I forgot that. about that feature. Yeah. That is a big yeah. one. <laughs> um, Mary says, do you, um, good one, do you offer retouching for any of the students? Um, she specifically says the older ones, I'm thinking maybe acne yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Yep, I do. I, um, I upcharge retouching, but yes, I do. Oh, wow. Okay. So do you do that per image or per album? I have a per image price and a per album price. Okay. Um, and I don't advertise that I do it because I don't want to be, I, I don't like doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if somebody requests, you know, if there's obviously if they, they want to buy something and they ask, then I offer it. Okay, cool. Um, let's see, for a school with say 200 children, would you go in for more than one day to get three to five minutes per child? Um, and Joe says, I do nurseries now, but not schools as I prefer three to five minutes per child. Yeah. Um, it completely depends on the numbers. So for um, the biggest school I did this year, or technically last year, was 270. Uh, I did that over the course of five days, um, which seems like a lot. It gave me the flexibility to um, add the teachers into the mix, which I have, which you know hadn't been done in the past. Um, but also that would be the time that you'd be doing class photos. Could you do it faster? Yes. Um, you know, if you're going to be doing a high school with 800 kids, it's a whole different beast. And I'm in the process of considering that um, and figuring out how I would make that happen. Would I need, you know, one, two, three extra shooters? Would I, I don't know. Um, I haven't said yes to it yet because I'm still working it through in my mind, but um, let's see. So the first school I did was 65 children. I did that over two days. I probably could have crammed it into one, but they were little. Um, it was preschool through sixth grade. What okay. is the best time of year to offer to reach out to schools? And, um, if you're planning on doing, I guess, to add to Mary's question, if you're planning ahead, do you ever reach out like, you know, super early in the process, like a year in advance? 
Um, sure. I mean, really, if if you're in it now and you're thinking about it, you don't know until you've called. Um, some of them maybe have been working with the same photographer for 50 years. Some may be using a big box company and you know they don't love it, but it's working, so they don't want to do the research to find somebody else. So if you show up and solve a problem for them, they may be really, really pleased. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't know until you ask. So, I mean, what is it, July? Why not pick up the phone and see if somebody in the fall, most school photos happen in the fall. Um, there are a bunch of schools. I've been talking to other um, photographers who do schools who also do fall and spring at the same school, which blows my mind. Um, and, you know, they'll do a different backdrop or a different color and parents buy twice. I, I, yes, that I am one of those. That. My children's uh, preschool did twice a year and I bought every single time. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I haven't tried that yet, but um, especially with little littles, they grow so fast. So what, you know, yeah. where they look in September versus June is going to be different. Yes. Um, I, so I know that's not really a succinct answer. I would say probably the, the spring, winter, spring for the following fall would be a good place to start if you have the luxury. But don't wait till February because it's July right now. Um, and somebody put, um, let's see, who was it? I think it was Tara put in the chat while you were presenting that she read that if you are willing to contact a potential client five times that you're 80% more likely to get booked. So I don't think it would ever be too early to start. Like if you consider reaching out multiple times, um, you know, why not just start? There's no better time than the present if you're really looking into doing it, I think. Um, because you just offer black and white, do you have schools and, and or parents ask for color? So uh, I, I photographed over 500 kids in the last year, three schools and three pop-ups. And I think I had a total of four ask about color. Um, so, you know, again, if it was really important to them, I came up with an upcharge and I did it. Uh, but really people were just so happy to have these classic portraits of their children. They didn't see that they were black and white. They just saw they were beautiful pictures. Um, and because I didn't have the contrast, I think it really made it um, a special thing. Now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't offer color if that's what you want to do. Um, this is just what works for me and for the, um, the clients that I'm serving, which were all Montessori schools, just for the record. They were all private schools. I haven't gone into a public school yet. Um, so the expectations may be different in a public school, um, but they really loved them in the schools that I did. So I love that. I mean, I think it's something that, um, you know, sets you aside from any other photographer who probably does that. So um, I think, you know, to your point, it's like, if that's something as a photographer that you want to offer color, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I think it's amazing that only four people asked for color. That's great. Um, let's see. Do you offer a percent of your profit back to the school? Um, I've heard that Life Touch, et cetera, does this. Yeah, Life Touch does. Um, some people do. I do not. Um, if a school asked, I would have a conversation about it, but I don't offer it up. Um, mostly because I feel like I'm offering a beautiful service. I'm I'm offering additional things. I'm photographing the faculty at no additional cost. Um, I'm providing as a gift a class photo to each teacher. Um, and in some cases, uh, I'm also offering um, something to their auction um, for the, the large school that I did, which happens to be my son's school. Um, I offered a, a session package and I got a local um, salon that I'm friendly with to do a package for mom, hair, makeup, nails. And it went for over asking. So I raised an additional like $1,700 for the school that way. Oh, wow. Um, so that's how I choose to give back. Um, but that's a personal choice. Um, yeah. People who've had Life Touch expect that. But you have to remember that you are offering a different service, a better service, a better quality of product. Um, and it's not the same as Life Touch. So they're a straight numbers game. You know, they don't care. They just click a button and, and they work on percentages. Yeah. I don't mean to dis disparage them, but it's a very different thing than than fine art school photos. It is definitely. Um, how do you do you? And if you do, how do you ask for a model release from the parents? Um, so I do that in the uh, parent education piece. So on the link to my website uh, where I drive them to introduce myself, I have a required form at the bottom. And the three things that I ask them in that form are do you want your child's gallery password protected? Yes or no? Um, would you be uh, comfortable with me sharing your child's images? Yes, no, or yes, and, which was the example I gave, um, which was some families are okay with it being in my portfolio or my website, but not on social media. They just don't put their children's face on social. Um, and then, or they can just say no. 
And then the third thing I ask is I give them the opportunity to opt in to my email newsletter list. So I do that at the front end um, because you're never going to chase them down later. And how do you add that to your website? I think you said you use Squarespace. Is that I, use, I use Squarespace and I um, include one of their forms, uh, built-in forms that I have then just um, dump into a spreadsheet where I'm able to access it. That is so cool. It's like magic. <laughs> it is, it is, it's really helpful. Um, I didn't do it for the first school and I regretted it. Um, and so I added it later um, and it was, it was great. Otherwise, you know, you can't, you can't have the material to build the portfolio unless you do a model call, which is how I started. Right. With those two kids and my son. Um, let's see. There's a couple of questions over in chat that I want to make sure I didn't miss. Um, uh, okay. So, uh, who is the printer and paper again? It was Color Ink, right? Yeah, I use Color Ink. Yep. And, and what was the paper? Was it their deep mat? I, I use their deep mat um, Fuji paper. Um, okay. I also use, though I should mention, I self-fulfill for schools, but for the pop-ups, um, I use Miller's because they're a linked lab with ShootProof, and it's right. the lab I use for my private clients as well. Um, and so that just automatically goes to Miller's. You check the crop, you send it off, the parents pay for the shipping, and, and they deliver it. The only difference there is that it doesn't get delivered in my nice little folio with my logo on it, but... Um, because pop-ups are all over the place and parents live all over the place. It just doesn't make sense for them to like meet me to pick them up or something like that. And do you, is your price structure similar for both or is it a little bit more expensive at the pop-up? So that's another great question. Um, the first pop-up I did, I actually did because of COVID as an option for the families. And I did the first two schools back to back, uh, end of September, beginning of October. And then I opened a middle of October date outside under a tent at our local community center for the families who either were sick, were, were distance learning, didn't want to be in the building, were not comfortable being inside. So I really did it as a service. It wasn't like a sales opportunity. So I gave the exact same pricing structure there as I did for the schools because that was my intention. Um, and then I did that again with the second pop-up. When I went to Brooklyn, um, I increased my full digital gallery price um, from 90 to 150 because a, I knew the market could bear it, and B, I had to pay over five hundred dollars to rent the space that I was using, um, and it was a huge investment of time and money for me to be there. Um, so I'm glad that I did that. Um, so it really just depends on where and what and why, I guess. Right. Well, and I think um, profitability is very important to consider in all of those situations. So I hadn't even thought about the whole rental aspect of it and needing to cover those costs. So that totally makes sense. Yep. Um, okay, Joe has a lot of great questions, which is awesome. Um, did you consider different selling platforms and why did you choose Shootproof? I love Shootproof where I can, where I can, <laughs> but I have used Got Photo uh, to speed things up a few times this year, but it feels less personal, especially when someone needs help ordering. Um, yes and yes. <laughs> uh, again, I think it depends on your numbers. Um, got photos. Uh, and there, as I mentioned, if you go back uh, for the replay, I listed four or five or six that I explored. Um, they It's a completely different structure. Um, it's slightly less uh, personal, it's less sort of designy, but also they take a percentage of every sale, which is a huge consideration. Um, shoot proof is a monthly or annual fee, and they don't take a cut of any purchase. So whether you sell a $20 photo or $900, they're not taking a cut. Um, with Got Photo, they do. So you have to factor that into your cost of doing business. Um, there are other features they have the ability to, um, which is why I mentioned if you can get the parents' email and phone number, they can do email marketing pushes, they can do text, text to parents, and all that can be automated, um, which may increase sales. Uh, also, it's less cumbersome and less time for you. So you just kind of have to decide what your time is worth and what's what end product you want your um, families to experience. So there's a lot of things to consider. Awesome. Great questions, everybody. Um, if anyone else has any questions afterwards, Lindsay has graciously extended the invitation to reach out to her. Um, also, if you want to go and give this a shot, I think it would be really fun to also share it with Lindsay because um, I know just from my several conversations that I've had, uh, over the last couple of months with Lindsay, I, I've realized that she is like, <laughs> you're like the consummate professional, you're very organized, you advocate for other 
photographers. So if y'all decide to try this, please keep us posted. It would be really fun to um, see how everybody grows um, and kind of make a little community out of it. And we've got folks in the chat thanking you so much, Lindsay, for coming today. Thanks, guys. Awesome. And thank you for me, too. I really appreciate it. And it's been a really a pleasure to get to know you. And thanks for spending so much time putting this together for us. It's great. Thank you. And a quick thank you to Elena Blair, um, who sort of pushed me over the edge to say yes to this. Um, I took uh, a couple of her courses in family photography. Um, I know she's a huge shoot proof fan and um, her schooled course was a great jumping off point. She does use only natural light, which is why I mentioned that. Um, so if that's something you think you might want to do um, and the idea of investing in lighting and all of that is just too much. Uh, I encourage you to explore Elena's education offerings as well. I'm really grateful. To yeah, you. absolutely. I've actually, I've taken schooled also and also her newborn um, one. So um, yeah, if you guys haven't looked into her stuff, go check that out too, because it's awesome. And we love Elena. She's great. Just a great person on top of being a great photographer. <laughs> and she's built a really wonderful community to, to help yeah. others. So it's, it's a great example for me too. Is. She yeah. is for sure. Okay, well, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. It's Friday Eve, so only one more day to go till the weekend. And, <laughs> and keep an eye on your um, inbox. You'll receive the replay with the link to the um, gear guide, which I also did drop in the chat. So hopefully you guys found that there. If not, it'll be in your inbox. And so if branding is something you want to learn about, maybe Karen will have me back. <laughs> yes, exactly. That would be great. <laughs> I'd love that. Sorry, that awesome. was <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, everybody have a great weekend and thank you so much. And we will see you soon. Bye. Thank you so much.